like this building in Chicago, where a beautiful addition was an ugly catastrophe in the making. This could have been deadly for people on the streets below. A layer of heavy marble covering the outside was a lethal disaster waiting to happen. We're up there on the side of the building. We are shocked at the condition of the marble. This building was designed to have high impact, just not like this. The Windy City has long been famous for its bold architecture. With a skyline dominated by massive skyscrapers, the city has been home to the world's tallest building more than once. For more than 100 years, Chicago and Manhattan have battled each other for the title of the greatest skyline, which usually meant the tallest building. By the 1970s, thanks to huge leaps in structural engineering, Chicago led the world in skyscraper design. Master stonemason Robert Gerskis spent three years working on one of the city's tallest towers. All right, here we go, ladies and gentlemen. Although few know the story, Chicago's Aeon building has a very dramatic history. Chicago traffic helicopter walking by X-ray. Totally Completed in 1973, this 83-story skyscraper was the Standard Oil Company headquarters, known locally as Big Stan. Beautiful, beautiful. Very nice. When built, it was Chicago's tallest building and the fourth tallest in the world. This is the building right here, formerly known as Standard Oil Building, 137 feet off the hard deck all the way up to the top. Right now, we're approximately 1,200 feet above ground level, and the views are spectacular. Totally awesome. Big Stan wasn't just super tall. In engineering terms, it was a trailblazer. As architecture historian Rick Keel explains, it pioneered a new structural system. The Aeon Tower actually has the frame of the building and the support of the building in the outside wall. And the outside wall forms a giant square tube that goes up into the sky. For decades, most towers were supported by columns spread evenly throughout the building. But for Big Stan, architects placed steel columns in tightly packed rows around the outside, known as a tube frame with a central core of columns. That tube is then tied across between the floors uh, to the center elevator core, which gives it uh, more strength. Tube frame towers could resist greater lateral forces from high winds or earthquakes than their predecessors, allowing them to grow taller. With Big Stan, the columns were long, slender triangles running the full height of the tower, interspersed with narrow windows. But the architect had bigger plans beyond the revolutionary steel skeleton. As well as innovating the internal structure, the architects wanted to create an iconic exterior that truly shone in the skyline. That shine came from one of the most ambitious cosmetic jobs since the Great Pyramid of Giza. All 83 stories of steel would be covered with top-of-the-line Carrara marble from northern Italy. As material scientist Laura Powers explains, marble has a long history in construction when appearance is a priority. Carrara marble is a wonderful stone. It was Michelangelo's marble of choice for sculpting because it is so pure, it's very predictable when you're working with it. Because it is such a, a special stone, when someone wants to make a statement, they'll use Carrara marble. Marble can be highly polished, and solid blocks will last centuries. But structurally, Big Stan didn't need any more support, and so the outside was purely aesthetic. To achieve the designer's intended look, Big Stan took advantage of the latest engineering advances in rock cutting. The plan was to cover the triangular columns with thin sheets of marble, just one and a quarter inches thick, 
running from street level to the top, 83 stories above. In all, it took 43,000 panels, each weighing as much as a motorcycle. In 1973, when Big Stan opened its doors for business, it was the tallest marble-covered building in the world. But just a decade later, the shine began to fade. Routine inspections revealed the slick marble coat was cracking and in danger of crashing down to the ground. This is where restoration specialist Robert Gerskis came in. He captured this unique footage as he assessed the damage. We're up there on the, on the side of the building. We are shocked at the condition of the marble. The fear was that the sheets of rock, as heavy as two men, could have fallen from 80 stories up. As early as the construction phase, there were reports that the marble was not secure. It's reported that on Christmas Day in 1973, one of the slabs fell from Big Stan, and it pierced the roof of the neighboring office. The fact that it happened on a public holiday might have been a blessing in disguise. This is the actual piece from the Aeon buildings. Full panel, typical panel is like four foot by five foot. This is about 11 pound piece right here. A thousand feet up in the air, all the way down to the ground. This would do some serious damage. So, why was the same type of marble that had lasted over 500 years in Italy, struggling after less than 20 in Chicago? It seems thin sheets of marble and the Chicago climate were a bad combination. Structural engineer Michael Scheffler analyzed the damage in the 1980s. Well, it had proven the test of time in Italy. Italy has a very benign environment. Chicago has a much different climate than Italy. In Chicago in the winter, you can get below zero and you can get up to 100 degrees and this had a profound effect on the material's behavior. The problem was something called thermal hysteresis, which basically means an irreversible bending or bowing out of a panel caused by temperature change. With the building known as Big Stan exposed to the extremes of Chicago weather, the outside of the panels were repeatedly heated or cooled more dramatically than the inside. This gradually and permanently altered the internal structure of the marble, causing the panels to bow outwards. They were beginning to warp and pronounced bowing outward as much as an inch and a half at the center of the panel in a four foot two inch height. But thermal hysteresis wasn't just bowing the panels. As they deformed, they became more vulnerable in critical places. Many of the panels were experiencing cracking and spalling at their connections. It was revealed through testing that the material had lost, in some cases, as much as 90% of its strength. Not only did it spoil the clean lines, but there was a real risk that the panels could literally pop themselves off the building. In the 1980s, the marble facade on Chicago's Standard Oil Tower was cracking, and something had to be done to protect people below. A very temporary solution was found until a complete redesign could be put into place. Stone restoration specialist Robert Gerskis explains. This building was a total challenge because we had to put on straps on over 43,000 pieces of marble. If it wasn't for the straps holding on the marble on the side of the building, uh, we would have a huge problem. Pieces probably would fall off. The ultimate solution was just as bold as the original design. Robert was one of the master stonemasons tasked with replacing all 43,000 heavy marble panels. This job was just massive in its undertaking. This is the largest, probably the biggest replanting job, the tallest replanting job in the world at the time. 
The audacious plan was to recover the entire building in a much tougher Chicago weatherproof stone, granite. We started replanting 1988. We had to take off 43,000 pieces of marble and replace it with 43,000 pieces of granite, all done on the outside, and the building is still occupied. They did not shut down the building. So the people that worked on this building had to be the best of the best of the business. Replacing the heavy panels, more than 1,000 feet up in high winds, was more than just a technical challenge for Robert and his team. And sometimes we had to contend with very, very high winds. It was very, very scary. You had to be aware of your surroundings. And with that being said, courage is learning how to manage your fear. By 1992, after nearly four years, the biggest renovation on one of the tallest buildings in the world was finally complete. Replacing the thousands and thousands of panels is said to have cost $80 million, nearly half the original construction cost. But nearly 30 years later, the cladding is still going strong. While the drastic solution was expensive, it was a huge success. And since Big Stan's original high-class cladding catastrophe, Architects and engineers no longer use Carrara marble for external coverings anywhere in the U.S.